when you invited me to come and serve as your interim pastor, I began to look at the calendar, began to pray through what God would have me to communicate from his word to you. And along the way, the Lord made introductions to people that just seemed obvious that they needed to be invited to be a part of this preaching schedule. Uh, today is no exception. Ketrick is my friend. Ketrick serves in a very unique capacity because he ministers to an incredibly hurt, uh, hurting uh, population in the world in which we lived. And those are minors that are caught up in domestic sex trafficking. As spiritual director chaplain, Ketrick oversees the spiritual health and well-being of the staff and survivors at the refuge for domestic minor sex trafficking. This is provided through personal connections as well as corporate chapel gatherings where relationships and spiritual development can have the ability to be strengthened. Prior to joining the refuge team, Ketrick served as senior pastor at Telluride Christian Fellowship in Telluride, Colorado for 10 and a half years. He partnered in the startup of new churches in the US and provided leadership training for pastors both in the US and abroad. As a missionary, Pastor Kittrick traveled to Mexico, Peru, India, and the Philippines. And in the Philippines, he helped to build a home for the orphanage. He has served as deputy chaplain for San Miguel uh, County Sheriff's Department uh, in Colorado. And most especially, he loves the Lord. Will you welcome today my friend, Kittrick. Kittrick, come and share with us from God's Word. Good morning. It is an honor and a privilege to be here with you. Um, it is a blessing to be able to meet Pastor David, uh, like he said, through the refuge and our connections there. And the refuge is a unique place. It is it's something that, um, well, the Lord has created a, a, a safe place. And one of the things that we do is to create an, an environment where they are loved unconditionally, but, and we hold the hope until they can hope for themselves. It's, uh, the refuge is one of the largest of its kinds in the US. We have available bedding for up to 40 girls currently. And while they're there, um, well, back up, we serve from the age of 14 to 19. And while they're there, they uh, attend school. The University of Texas has a charter school there where they're able to get their high school diploma. Uh, we have a um, uh, a nursing clinic there, uh, equine therapy. Uh, we have therapists on campus. And so these young ladies can come and begin to rediscover who they were created to be by our Heavenly Father. And then they began to be a part of writing their story instead of someone else dictating what their story is going to look like. And so it's been an honor, it's been a privilege to be a part uh, part of the staff there at the refuge and getting to know uh, friends like Pastor David and um, Rich and Jim and Bree Belinda, right? All right, I'm <laughs> there who are also uh, here with us this morning. So again, I want to thank you so much for allowing us to be here uh, to just celebrate God's goodness in the midst of times where it seems to be chaotic but it's an honor and it's peaceful to know that we serve a God who has not left us. Whew, that's where I was hoping an amen would hit us right there. I'm like I am in the right place. You know, you know, and sometimes, you know, we, we find ourselves doing things that it, it may, it may appear be a little, some may call it um, ridiculous or radical at some point, you know, you may step out there and I, I was reading, uh, a story yesterday about a young lady. She's 60 years old. She's a mother of 11, nine girls. That's awesome in itself. She, she had worked with the space project in Washington, D.C. back in 2019, and they had invited the Afghan robotics team to come over and be a part of this conference. 10 young ladies come over and they were like, this is the future of the Afghan people. And she woke up on August the 3rd, this past few days ago, with a burden on her heart that something was wrong. 
that, that something was out of place and she, and she couldn't shake it. So this mother of 11, she put it in her heart. I've got to do something to help these young ladies. So she contacted her senator and then she's like, well, no, this is above my pay grade. I, what am I going to do here? Then she contacted a friend of hers who used to be a roommate. Just so happens she was in Afghanistan, in Qatar. And she's like, well, maybe I could go there, but where do I go? Who do I talk to? Just so happens her roommate, her former roommate told her that, you know, I currently work at the embassy. And so she talked to her chief of staff and they got the balls rolling where they were able to rescue those 10 ladies and bring them back to a place of safety. And to me, that is someone, yes, yes. This is someone who took a chance. It may have looked a little ridiculous. Some may have laughed at it. Some may have ridiculed it. But she took a chance to do something to make a difference in the world. And, and those are the type of things that make me ask myself, Kedrick, when was the last time you did something that was a little risky? When was the last time you did something that was a step of faith that maybe some would have laughed at and maybe some would have looked at and said, well, you know, you don't have to go that far. And so I have to ask myself, is, Kedrick, what are you doing in, in your life that could better the life of someone else in the process. And so when I looked at this young lady in her life, she stepped out there and she did something that made a difference in 10 young ladies' lives. And she's currently working to get about 25 more uh, people rescued from that uh, tragic situation that's happening in their lives. So if you have your Bible with me, I just want to share real quick this morning. Again, it is an honor to be here in Proverbs chapter 3. And we'll start at verse 5 there. And it reads like this. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. I love this scripture. Depending on the translation you're reading, the King James Version says it will be health to your navel and marrow to your bones. And, and, and the word marrow there, if you look in the translation, it speaks of a refreshing. It's kind of interesting, or a, or a moisturing, or a watering, a drink. And the word bones there, it literally speaks of the, the essence, of the substance of who we are. It's the core of who we are. And so, and, and he says it here, at the beginning he said, trust in the Lord, Ketrick, not in your own understanding. Allow me to direct your path in the middle of t times when it appeared to be chaotic. Allow me to direct your steps even when you may feel confused and don't know what the next thing is going to be around the corner. If you allow me to direct your steps, here's what he's saying. He said, I will bring, I will bring a refreshing to the core of who you are. See, sometimes we, 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 we slip a little bit. God, who am I really? Why was I created? And we get a little dry in our walk with the Lord sometimes. We get a little dry. We begin to doubt. And the Lord said, no, there are some times when you take steps, when you don't know exactly the outcome, he is encouraging us that I will be with you and I will bring a refreshing to your very identity. The very fact of why you was created. See, we begin to walk in our created self when I walk in his divine calling. When he asked me to take a step, I take a step and I'm like, God, that sounds crazy. That's a little ridiculous. That's, you know, I'm laughing at myself <laughs> or I'm laughing at you, really. <laughs> That's what people tell me all the time. You know, God, he, he has a sense of humor. Well, it wasn't funny to me sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I understand. My wife looks at me and is like, honey, he has never let us down, Amen. ever. Back in 2008, when we were called to go to Telluride, Colorado, in the little ski resort town to pastor a church, I, I, I pastored a church there, and, and first of all, I had to go to my wife, and it's like, well, honey, what do you think? And, you know, and she was like, mm, I don't know. And at first, it was like, we pushed away from the table, said, that's not for us to do, but as we allowed the Lord to speak to our hearts, we knew that's what we were supposed to do. Drop everything you have, leave everybody you know, but go do something for a people that needs something. And the Lord began to show me, say, it's in those times, Ketrix, where I water you. 
where I, the very core and the essence of who you are come alive. And so I was thinking about this, and, and there was a guy, there was a gentleman who, who popped into my head that made me start thinking a, along these lines. And, and you may be familiar with him. It goes by the name of Elisha. Not Elijah, but Elisha. And Elisha means God's salvation. And he had a pretty radical, if you would, ridiculous style of life. I mean, when you look at his life, when he first started in his ministry in 1 Kings 19 and 21, his call to the ministry was someone coming and putting a, 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 a robe or a mantle on him while he's plowing the field with 12 yokes of oxen. oxen. He's in his family business, you know, and, and, if, and, and he just dropped it. Now, for a lot of us, dropping it means going home, having a conversation with mom and dad, having a conversation about this is where we're going to end this. I've got to go. I've been called into the ministry. That's not what he did. The Bible says that he, he, he killed the oxen. There's no turning back. And the plows, he burned the plows. And so I'm like, yeah, that's a little radical. But this is the way his ministry began. And then he went on in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 1. He, he gave a widow God's economic strategies to get out of debt. You know, he's saying stuff to people that would sometimes make them look a little cross-eyed at him if, if he got it wrong. And then 2, 2, Kings, excuse me, 2 Kings chapter 4 and verse 16, he tells a woman that she's going to have a baby. She didn't ask for a baby, but he knew the longing of her heart by the grace of God. But then the baby dies. So now you've given her something that she didn't ask for, and now it's dead. What are we going to do? So he go, and by the grace of God, he prays, and the child comes to life again. I mean, this guy is moving in ways where a lot of us go like, dude, you need a therapist. I think I know one. If I did that and tell you, right, there, you know, the mayor would come and see me and say, Keetri, we love you, but can you stop? <laughs> Second Kings chapter 4 and 38, he removes poison from a pot of stew by throwing a little flour in there and, and feeding his pupils that was with him. Second Kings 5 and 14, he tells this guy by the name of Naaman, who was a, he was a pretty radical, cruel uh, commander of the army of Syria, you know, who had leprosy. Go and dip in this dirty river seven times and you'll be healed. Even Naaman thought that was crazy. We're not doing this. Can we do something else? And he's like, no, this is the way we operate here. We, we, we're not going according to your own understanding. We're going according to what the Lord is speaking into our lives in this moment. And so he did it and he was healed. But then there was this issue with this axe head. A couple of guys, guys cutting trees, axe head fall into the water. And they're like, we're in trouble. It was borrowed. Cuss a stick, throw it in the water, the axe head float. I don't know, that would get my attention. <laughs> By now, we're like, well, yeah, he may be doing crazy stuff, but I think the guy's on to something. He was walking in steps. He was walking in the way that was like, God, if you don't show up, we're in trouble. And let's be real, a lot of times in our lives, when we take steps of faith, that's the way it is. God, we need you to show up in our lives, whether it's in our national events, or it's in our local church events, or it's in our personal lives. God, we need you to order our steps and strengthen the very core of who I am that I know when I take a step, you are with me. I'm not alone. And so when, when I look at all these things that he had done, and I'm like, wow, that was pretty cute. That was pretty awesome. But then it, it, it gets better. And we'll look at this last one that he did in 2 Kings 13 and 20. It says, then Elisha died. Well, okay, Pastor, you said that he was going to do something else, but you said he was dead. Well, the scripture said he was dead. It's, isn't it amazing? Even when we think we can't go any further, God has already gone ahead of us. When I think I can't do anything else, God is saying, watch me do it for you. And this gives me hope. It gives me courage that no matter what's surfacing on the water around me, I know there's a God that I serve that's got my back. Amen. I love that. Amen. That was Perfect. Perfect. 
I actually have an app on my phone that says amen for me, believe it or not. It's, maybe it's an, we'll talk about that later, Pastor. We can, therapist, right? Okay. It says, verse 20, then Elisha died and they buried him and the, and the raiding bands of Moab invaded the land in the spring of the year. So it was as they were burying a man that suddenly they spied a band of raiders and they put the man in the tomb of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood on his feet. I love this. This is the kind of stuff that, you know, the fire shut in your bones. This is right now. You may not see it on the inside. I'm like, mm, I'm doing cartwheels right here in front of you. Because here you have a man who had lived his life based on God's word and doing what God has called him to do. And even after he couldn't do it anymore, God is like, but I've got your back. I've got you covered. I, 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 I'm going to work on your behalf. But, and this is what it says. He was dead. And then there was another dead guy who just so happened to come in contact with his bones. Remember bones, that means the core, the essence of who we are. It's the strength, it's the thing to hold us up. This, this flesh is it's, it's more than just a coat rack. Our bones is not just a flesh rack. They hold us up, they, they move without the bones. Things just don't work the same. And God is saying, Kedrick, if you trust me, church, if you trust me, I'm gonna bring moisture to where you're worried right now. I'm going to bring a refreshing to where you're questioning right now. I'm going to bring life to what you thought was dead right now. And says he let this guy down and he touched his bones and he revived and stood on his feet. There was a couple of things that stood out to me here in this passage of scripture. Number one, remember the steps we take, the things that we do, the places we go, the things that we are there's fear down inside, but the courage on the outside keeps us going. Remember, it's God that's doing it. It's God that's doing it. It's not Ketrick. The fact that I'm here right now it is not because of, you know, of my good looks. Not that you agree with any of that at all. It's not because you know, I have all No, it's because God opened doors, put people in the right places to do the right things for the right people to hear the right thing, to end themselves up in Qatar and bring in 10 young ladies out of a, a war-torn country. So whatever, you are, whatever you're doing right now, and maybe you feel a little dry, maybe you're feeling like, well, I don't know. Just maybe. I don't know about this season that I'm in. I don't know, do I continue to do this? Or do I continue to do that? Or, or why, God, is this happening? Remember, these next steps that we take, it's not the steps of yours. It's the steps of God. It's in him that I live and move and have my existence. God, it's you that's moving. It's you that's charting the course, and it's going to be you that save us. Remember, Elisha means God's salvation. So this dead guy come in contact with Elisha's God's salvation's essence, and he was revived and stood on his feet. The second thing that come to my mind when I think about this scripture is kind of like a reminder. It's like, remember, it was God that did it. But the steps that you take, Ketrick, may they be the steps that will influence the next generation, that will bring life to someone else, that will bring life and cause those to stand on their feet when they can stand by themselves. So I have to ask myself, Ketrick, are you doing something to help someone to stand that couldn't stand by themselves? The very core of who we are. See, my bones, the core, my, the essence of who I am will testify of God's goodness. Not necessarily to me, but it will testify to those who have come in contact with me. What are their words about my life towards them? I tell you, there's 10 young ladies that's coming out of Afghanistan. We'll never forget that lady who went there to help them. They will never forget her. 
for the rest of their lives. Who knows? They may name their children after. I don't know. But whatever it is, she, her, the essence of who she is woke her up in the middle of the night and would not let her rest until she did something a little radical to bring life to someone who couldn't help themselves. And this is where the Lord is bringing us. Allow your bones, allow the, your I, identity, the core of who you are, testify on your behalf. Not necessary to you, but let it be a testimony to those who come in contact with you. And your next steps that, we're take, that you're taking, that we're taking in this season that we're going forward. Remember, it's God that's doing it. Elisha did a lot of crazy things, a lot of radical things. But one of the most powerful things he did was after he couldn't do it for himself anymore. And it was God who moved on his behalf. And that's who's moving on our behalf today. Wherever you are, whatever you're experiencing, just remember this. He will never leave you or forsake you. He's with us right now. Right now. Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your goodness that rests upon us. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you said as we trust in you that you will strengthen our bones. You will water and you would moisture and you will bring life and a refreshing to the essence of who we are. That would be a catalyst to others to be able to stand on their feet, to be able to stand and bring life to the world that is around them. We bless you today, Lord. We bless this house. We thank you, Lord, that you continue to move across the land, Lord, and we ask you to give us wisdom at the refuge and give us wisdom, Lord, in our churches here in the U.S. and, and abroad across the globe. We thank you for your goodness and your grace in Jesus' name.